We're going to talk about the three major color wheels that you can use. Each is used in very specific uh, and very different situations using different mediums. So when we're talking about the medium of light, we use the additive color wheel. Things that use the medium of light would include your computer monitor, your television screen, because these things emit light. So the any anytime you see something rendered digitally on a computer monitor or a te uh, television, that is using the additive color wheel. The additive color wheel has the three primaries of red, green, and blue. So uh, that's where RGB color mode comes from, and that's why you want to put your files into RGB mode when you're working digitally for the web. That's where RGB comes from, because that's RGB standing for red, green, and blue, which are the three primaries of light that is being emitted. So for the additive color wheel, we're going to place the three primaries of, of that um, here, red, green, and blue. So to do that, first I want you to open up the RGB color palette. So open up your swatches palette over here on the right hand side. Go to window swatches if you don't see it listed. And then you'll want to go to the little drop down menu in the swatches palette and click on open swatch library, default swatches, basic RGB. So you'll select the basic RGB color palette of swatches and basically um, there are lots of ways you can view these. You can click uh, to, on the little drop down arrow to select different ways. So you can look at them as small thumbnails or medium thumbnails. For now I'm going to put this on a large list view so that I can see the name of each of these colors. And notice that some of them are RGB green, cyan, magenta, etc. That's why um, we're using the RG, basic RGB palette. So we come over to the additive color wheel. I'm going to select this uh, square um, shape, uh, not a square, it's just a shape, and make it red. And then I'm going to select the next one to make it green, and the third one to make it blue. So I've made my red, green, and uh, blue primary colors in the position for primary colors. And then I'm going to fill in the secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow. So anytime you take red light, a green light, and blue light and mix them, this is how they're going to mix. So red light plus green light equals yellow light, green light plus blue light equals cyan light, blue light plus red light equals magenta light. Uh, we'll get to the intermediate steps in between in a second. Um, I want to now do the subtractive color wheel. So the primaries of the subtractive color wheel are going to be cyan, magenta, and yellow. So this is where CMYK comes from, the K standing for black. Uh, CMYK has to do with print process colors. This is any time you are mixing uh, inks on a piece of paper, say for example to print a photograph. Um, your printer, your color printers have cyan, magenta, and yellow ink cartridges, and uh, as well as a black ink cartridge, and they use those three primaries plus black to uh, print color photographs, to print uh, basically anything that involves the use of inks. So subtractive color is light that is absorbed or reflected off of a surface. So light hits a surface, some of it gets absorbed, and then some of it gets reflected. And the light that gets reflected off the surface is, is seen subtractively. Um, so that's, that's why they have different primaries, because we're dealing with mediums such as inks and dyes. So the primary colors of that are cyan, magenta, and yellow. And the secondary colors are red green and blue. And so the subtractive color wheel um, is related to the additive color wheel, but of course they are very different. They deal with working with very different mediums. Now we come to the traditional color wheel. This is one that most of you, uh, most everyone is familiar with, and this has the traditional primaries of red, yellow, and blue. So this color wheel is traditionally used when you're mixing paint. Now it's important to note that the traditional color wheel is actually um, operating subtractively. It is basically another type of subtractive color wheel because uh, paints all, uh, absorb and reflect light. So 
paint operates subtractively in that um, paint will absorb light and then reflect light and the light that gets reflected is how we see the color of that paint. So the traditional color wheel has the primaries of red, yellow, and blue and then the secondaries of green and then violet and orange. Now I'm going to pu not put the violet and orange there yet because I'm, I need to mix them. I need to actually mix those colors. So I'm going to show you how you're going to mix colors to fill in the intermediate colors in between. You'll want to click and drag um, using the rectangle tool to make two basic shapes. And then we're going to set up a blend. Um, what we're, I'm going to show you how the blend works here by filling in colors for it. So I'm actually going to initially put red in this square and then select the yellow and then click and drag the yellow to put yellow in that square and then deselect this square here so that nothing is selected. So I have a red and a yellow square and I'm going to show you how we can mix them together to make orange. I'm going to use the blend tool to do that because blending basically is the same thing as mixing. So we're going to go to object blend, blend options and set up our blend and we want specified steps of one step. So type in one and make sure you've selected specified steps and hit OK. Then you're going to grab the blend tool over here and then you click on the red swatch, click on the yellow swatch and it blends them together to make an orange swatch in the middle. So it's kind of like taking a red pile of paint and a yellow pile of paint and then mixing them together to see what happens. Um, except we're doing it digitally here. So then what you want to do is you want to deselect everything. So you'll grab the black arrow tool and just click anywhere on the artboard, doesn't matter where. And then get your eyedropper tool. And with the eyedropper tool, go ahead and just pick up that orange color that's in the middle with the eyedropper tool. And notice it gets, puts, it gets put in here into your fill color selection box. And then what you can do is click and drag that color to place it where you want it. So this is how you're going to fill in the rest of the colors in your charts. You just work your way around mixing the colors together. So for example, we uh, also want to mix red and blue. Well, we already have a red swatch here. We just need to have a blue swatch where the yellow swatch is. So we're going to select the blue to put it into the fill color box and then click and drag it to replace the yellow with the blue. <clears throat> And then remember to deselect everything because you don't want to change the color of the blue box. So you have to deselect everything, then grab the eyedropper tool, click on the violet, and then you can click and drag to place the violet where you need it. So you'll work your way around like this and we can now mix the violet and the red to get the intermediate color in between. Um, it's important to make sure that you do the intermediate colors as well. So we've mixed uh, the primaries and the secondaries and now we need to put violet on one end, red on the other, and notice that it automatically mixes it in the middle so that we can then basically remember to deselect because you don't want to change the color of that red box. You want to put it here. So you grab the eyedropper tool, click and drag that color into the center and just keep working your way around like this. Etc. Etc. So eventually you're going to end up with something that looks like this where you filled in all of the colors in your color wheels and you have both the primary, the secondary and the intermediate colors. The last step is to fill in the center circles here, the center uh, shape for basically a mixture of all three primaries. So this is uh, relating again back to the difference between additive versus subtractive color wheels because the uh, when you take red, yellow, and blue and mix it together, you want to put it into the middle. So a mixture of red, yellow, and blue is going to give you black. So you'll want to go ahead and select black. So we can go here to the color picker to select black if we want to and just turn the B or the brightness down to zero to get black and then that puts the black there. Um, another way to get black um, is to go over to the uh, swatches and just select the black swatch from the swatches. But basically, um, 
And when you take the three primaries of the traditional color wheel, red, yellow, and blue, and mix them together, you're going to get some kind of a black color. Uh, depending on the quality of the paints, the black might be sort more like a muddy brown or a gray color, but um, you know theoretically it's black. Um, same thing for the subtractive color wheel because both the traditional color wheel and the subtractive color wheel operate by um, absorbing and then reflecting light. Um, so that's the important difference there. And so cyan, magenta, and yellow mixes down to a black color as well. And again, depending on the you know the quality of the inks and inks and dyes and paints are never perfect so more likely in reality it's going to be more like a dark grayish muddy brown color but theoretically it's black and then for the additive color wheel when you mix the light primaries when you mix red light green light and blue light you're going to get white light in the center so you'll leave this center as white and that's it